Hey there, my friend, it's Trisha Carr. Real quick before we head into this episode, I just want to make sure that you know about Modern Mystic Life, a subscription service for spiritual mentoring and education. The monthly subscription is only $11.11 per month. We have regular support and inspiration delivered with the utmost ease right into your text messenger two to four times per week. You can use your mobile device or your desktop messenger to access the lessons and meditations, a monthly mp3 download of a produced meditation, at least once per month live meditation led by me. There is no account login and we have a monthly live class workshop. These are usually $35 for non-subscribers, so it is quite a deal. And the community is amazing. This is a way for you to support the Charmed Life podcast and also a way for us to be able to work more closely together. So do check out how you can subscribe in the show notes. I hope to see you there. Are you interested in experiencing manifestation super fast? (laughs) I mean, like super fast. If you've studied all kinds of manifestation techniques and some things are maybe working for you, some things aren't, well, I want you to get excited about the one we'll be talking about today because it is Feng Shui with the world-renowned expert and star of the movie The Secret, Marie Diamond. We're going to talk about how you can Feng Shui your life, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Charmed Life Podcast. This podcast is all about magic, metaphysics, mysticism, and the unconditional love of the universe. And I am your host. My name is Trisha Carr. Well, like I said, we are going to have a really phenomenal show. My guest is Marie Diamond. She is one of the stars, people who were in The Secret. Do you remember The Secret? I mean, some of y'all might actually be too young for it. 2006, world phenomenon. And Marie teaches us all about this ancient and quite beautiful art of feng shui. So I don't want to delay any longer. I want to welcome on the show. Hi, Marie. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much, Risha, for having me here. I'm super excited to be here on the first day of the year. <laughs> yes, that's right. We It's a perfect time to talk about manifestation. And that's something I think feng shui, it, maybe some people don't realize. Is that what is the one of the things that is the first uh, misconception? How about that, about feng shui? I want to talk about that first, and then I want to hear about your whole story, too, because it's a beautiful one. <laughs> well, feng shui is, first of all, it's an energy system that is based on Chinese information for thousands of years. And I think um, the misconception for a lot of people is that they think that manifestation is only happening in their mind mm. and that they you know, have to do a lot of discipline and every day focusing on the right way of behaving, the right way of thinking. And you know, one of the things is that um, that is, according to feng shui, only one third of the results of manifestation. And another third is your connection with the divine, the connection with spirit, um, and how you relate with that. But the last part, and it's a missing link that most people are not aware of, is your environment. And that where you live, sleep, and work, they are all reacting as a subconscious three-dimensional vision board. And when you have that all around you, and that is aligned with your mindset, that is where manifestation happens faster. Yes, I love that three-dimensional vision board. Now, those of you who are here live, and of course, some people are listening live and some people are listening on the podcast feed, but those who are here live, welcome, and please drop us a comment to let us know where you're coming in from, or if you have any questions or anything at all about manifestation and, of course, about feng shui, or if you have any experience with it, this is the time I would love to hear from you. And hi, Yvette. Yvette is here. Nice to see you. So, Marie, uh, you have worked with, you actually (laughs) are a living proof of feng shui. Would you like to tell us a bit about your journey or the work you're doing, wherever you would like to start with this incredible unfolding as a global transformational teacher and this expert in this ancient and beautiful art of feng shui? Well, you know, let me just start quickly how I became aware of it. I was 15. I had a near-death experience after I was run over by a truck. And when I was on the other side, I got a message that I was 
to come back and that I was here to enlighten more than 500 million people. Now, I had no idea, of course, at 15 year old what that meant. This is a long time ago. And so right now I would start like you having a podcast and a YouTube channel, <laughs> right? So, but um, I and we didn't, point, have that. <laughs> didn't have it. So when I connect with my spiritual mentor that I already had for a couple of years at that point, he said to me, I have bad feng shui. Now, you know, I was born in Belgium in a Catholic family. You know, the word feng shui never dropped before. It was not even, there was no book available in any library. And this is way before internet, right? And so I just became aware that it was my environment that was affecting me. So I changed bedrooms, changed colors, changed images around me, kind of created a different vision board around me. And my life totally shifted. And that's how I then moved forward with that basic information till I started studying it at 30 years old um, in Asia, where I became a student of um, Chinese Grandmaster, understanding how the environment is affecting me. And of course, you know, I was already teaching spirituality at that point after a, a short but intense career as a lawyer. Um, I was teaching meditation, enlightenment, uh, to people and, you know, how to get on a spiritual journey. But I also understood that a lot of these people were stopped or stuck somehow to go to the next level because after a seminar, after a beautiful session with me, they went back to the same home and that home was still affecting them and based on the old energy that they had. So for me, it was like crucial to start implementing, you know, feng shui to my sharing with my students and then after a while, I felt after like doing this for eight years, I thought like, you know what, if I want to reach millions of people, I have to move to America. So that's what I did and immigrate to the US. And that something was very crucial for me because I put in my first office, I put my vision board up in my success direction. I will talk about that later. And I put on my success direction a little post-it note and I put in, I'm going to be in a movie seen by millions of people that will transform the world. <laughs> and I put also a little fake Oscar statue on it because it's like, that's a symbol of a movie that is successful. And I put on it 2006 Marie Diamond. Wow. And I put it all in my success direction. And within well, a month... You put 2006 down too? Yeah, I That's did. That's when the movie came out. That's wild. That, yeah. I didn't so know I, that piece. <laughs> I, I, I had no idea when, you know, but it's like I need a couple of years. It was 2001, right? Wow. So it was five years. Within a month, I had my first um, colleague that was in The Secret coming to me. That was Marcy Shaimov. And then she introduced me uh, because all these teachers at that point felt stuck. Mm -hmm. So their mindset, their own work was not working so well. And so suddenly I had clients like Marion Williamson and late Bob Proctor and John Gray and Jack Canfield. They were all my clients and they all felt like their work was not working. And so I added, you know, the, the ancient knowledge of feng shui, I'm a, a classical trained feng shui master. And they all started seeing this change happening. And then I was invited to one of their mastermind groups where all the top speakers and authors are part of. And that is actually where in 2005, the film The Secret was filmed and I was interviewed for it. Um, and then it came out in 2006. And so far it has reached more than 500 million people. So check, we've done it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the message you received at age 15 in that near-death experience, um, yeah, <laughs> it set you in motion and it happened. That's incredible. Now, you mentioned directions. We all have mm -hmm. success directions, health directions. You, By the way, we should mention Feng Shui Your Life is your brand new yeah. book. Yes, yeah. good. There it is. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm, I've got it on Audible and I have a signed copy, an actual signed oh. copy from Marie, which I'm, yeah. I just cherish. I love it. And I, I love listening to it on Audible too. I like both oh, applications, beautiful. you know. Yeah. And so there, there are your success directions, which Marie's, Marie will tell us about those by the way, which you'll tell us as well. You have an app so you can go and find yeah. out your success directions by going yes. in the app. Everyone's like, right away, I'm going to get it. I got it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. So, you know, feng shui, um, advanced feng shui is really personally based, based on your birthday and your birth gender. So people can go to the app store and uh, put in Marie Diamond and they will actually get um, to put in their birthday, their birth gender, it creates a calculation. It's different than numerology. Mm -hmm. And then they will get an energy number. I don't know what is yours, Trisha. 
Oh gosh, I've forgotten. Seven, I think it's seven. Yeah, seven. What's the name advice. of it? The advisor. advisor. Yeah. yeah. And you can yeah. tell by it. So it's 317, 1974. Is that, did I have it right? 11. Um, yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So, <laughs> Sorry to put you through that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm just quickly calculating. Mm -hmm. So what you have is that based on, on that, you will have a compass mm -hmm. and you will have a success direction. So mine is Southwest. Somebody else can be Northwest, somebody else East. And the Feng Shui Your Life book is actually helping you to go through all the steps to really attract the dream life that you want. Now, in your success direction, that's where you put your vision board. That's where you put, you know, books that are about success, Con you know, your products that you have, your services, business cards, all this. But you need to always do it from the center of the space that you're in. So people hold the compass and they hold it on heart level and then you see what's in their success direction. Now, in my success direction is literally my books. There are my awards. There are also my major uh, files and um, anything that relates with my business. But if it's in my bedroom, success is not my business. Success <laughs> is my romance, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's actually what I did also for people that are, you know, very well known in the field. And even, you know, Rhonda Byrne that um, was bringing forward the, the secret. At a certain point, she called me and she said, the secret is not working for me. Mm. And so I br went to her apartment that was in Los Angeles and I designed her space based on what I did in the book Feng Shui Your Life. And so in her relationship direction, I said to her, what do you want? She said, I want you to go global. So I said, put a globe. I mm -hmm. said, where do you want to connect with? She said, I want to be on Oprah. So she put an image of Oprah in her success direction. And so, of course, the, the secret at that time, a DVD, we put it also in her success direction. And so we actually, it's like acupuncture in a way. So it's like three-dimensional acupuncture. Mm -hmm. So instead of putting the needles on your body, it's like you put activations, like things that are resonating with you about your success, you put in your success direction. So that's like the place that, where your acupuncture of your home will work. If you want relationships, you will put it in your relationship direction. So this is a, a very advanced personal feng shui system that really works easily. And that's why I created the app. I created a book so for you or the Audible so you can listen to it and uh, check it out and change your home around to really manifest your goals. It's beautiful. Christine, who is here, Christine Annette says that she's been drawn to feng shui since she was a young adult. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have, but you didn't have to have a, a near death experience like Marie. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was the exception. Let's be yeah. honest. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, and so I now sometimes there are things that are a little bit challenging uh, to get to flow just right. And so there, you know, can you talk to us about? Well, I mean, obviously if you are in a home and it's just not working for you, but you can't move today, right? You yeah, can't move today right. and you can't move your door. You can't, maybe you can't even move your bed to the right position. So yeah. how do people manage that? How do we, how do we get around some of that stuff and do the best we can? Well, you know, I always say to people, even if you do 1% difference mm -hmm. from what you did before, it will already change. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we have to do full perfect feng shui. I mean, perfect feng shui does not exist, by the right, way. Right. right? Even I have lived in so many homes, it's never perfect. Mm -hmm. But each time you add something, the flow starts opening up. And you can yeah. literally start with creating space in your home. Yeah. Right. So by letting go of things that are broken, things that are not longer use that usable for you. So go through your closets, go through your cabinets, go to your phone, your computer, and delete all the things you do not longer need anymore, or let them go, give them to charity or friends. So you're creating space because ultimately the universe wants you to see changing something energetically. So by doing that, you're already telling the universe. God, I am ready for some change. Yeah. So the intention is already there. And then, of course, there are in the book, there are several steps. You can go personal, you can put your desk in the right position, you can add some crystals. There are so many layers to it. And even if you start doing something, people say, like, oh, I did this one thing and my life started going in another direction that is more aligned with the goals that I want. And it's, it sounds like you said, delete is such a great word for it. You know, we actually have, not me, but we collectively, <laughs> the smart guys, 
the smart people, we created computers, right? And we do need to delete files and um, you and you know apps and and different kinds of software that are no longer working or that we're not using or just that are dead weight because again, so the energy can flow and we are really the same way. That's why we created computers. Yeah. They function like us and yes. our subconscious mind is mapping all of that. My subconscious mind is mapping that little bit of clutter over there and the little dust bowl and the yeah. broken thing that's yeah. And it's, it's, it's clocking it and it's in a way, even in a small way, identifying with the energy of it. It's broken, right. you know, it's yeah. dirty. It's, it cheap maybe or whatever those different things are um so yeah it, it is a constant it's a constant yeah each time you go into a room it's actually a quantum field and yeah. so your subconscious uh, energy picks it up even if you are not and i would say to people look you have an idea which story you want to create in your life but if the environment around you is telling a different story subconsciously now guess who will win it's actually your environment yeah. because your environment is bigger it's constant Constant, it gives constant the same message because we as a person we want to uh, create a, a different message we think about something different we do affirmations we are visualizing but we do that perhaps five ten minutes a day or longer but still it's nothing compared with the effect of your home so I always say if your home aligns with what you desire that is when the energy starts moving forward mm, so good and it does it can and often does work very quickly because, I mean, all of the reasons that you're talking about. I love in the book, you talk about the three kinds of luck. And yeah. and could you tell us about that? Because that yeah. really, that resonated with me and really stoked me on this. <laughs> yeah. So, no, it's something that for me was a huge aha moment when my grandmaster were talking about that people are, you know, working with law of attraction, they are manifesting, but they're thinking just their mindset is enough. And he said, there's actually the first part is what he called the heavenly luck. It's like when you're born, you already have a basic package that you come along with, talents, some challenges, you know, you're born in a certain culture, certain place, parents. So there's like a basic law of attraction that your soul chose for you when you came in. Now, of course, can you change some of that? Well, if you're born in a country and you move to another country, you change that, right? So um, it, you have perhaps some challenges, you overcome these challenges, you will change that. So it's like, we call that first part your destiny or your karma. Mm -hmm. The second part is your human luck. And your human luck is actually your mindset, is actually your behavior. It is the actions you take. So let's say you have a basic package and you have a beautiful voice, but you never practice that voice, or you never really go even into a, a, a coaching about your voice, you never uh, sing, right? Or you stay in the shower instead of on a competition, then you ultimately will never do something with it. So you need to also practice and use your basic package, your purpose is part of it, and fulfill it in your human daily life. And then he said, less, most people experience that that part is like everything they should do, only yeah. the mindset and the behavior and the actions. And ultimately, it's only one third of your results because it's the last third, and that is your location. And we say that literally in business, location is everything, right? So location, 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 <laughs> right? But they are not thinking about how the location needs to look like how you as a human being fits in that location. So that is actually where feng shui, the energy system of the environment is coming in. And there are some principles and rules like, you know, that work with self-help, uh, self-development on spiritual level. There are some laws and principles at place that we also have in our environment. And once we are aligning that, then it's like we create an earth foundation and then it's easier for us to have a positive mindset. It is easier to take a good action. So there's an ease and effortless that starts happening when we have a, a grounded information, a layer that is aligned with our soul. And we will be right back. <laughs> 
Hello, Charmed Life listener, it's Trisha, and I am making a special invitation for you to Sacred Sphere. This is a bi-monthly communal learning, practice, and resonance space. It is your community for intuition, manifestation, and spiritual development. It's happening twice per month, and there are special benefits if you subscribe so that you can go to every one of these or see the replays. It is a place for your deep, immersive healing and your powerful manifestation practice to unfold in your life. I'm so excited about this. The vision for this is large and wonderful. We're going to be changing our own lives and I believe we're going to be changing the world. So check it out. The link is in the description. We can't wait to work with you, to see you, to love you there. Empowered Empath. This is a program designed for the sensitive soul, for the person with that empathic nature. And by the way, that is a healing ability. However, this is a healing ability that you can't turn off. You cannot turn off your empathic nature because it's more than just a psychic or healing ability. It is also how you are designed. So the Empowered Empath is a powerful program that is also gentle, consists of four modules with eight life-altering lessons, four aura tuning meditations, and we have bonus group healing and coaching sessions that are coming up really soon. You definitely want to check the show notes so you can see when those are coming up. We have access to it for a whole year. You'll be able to continue to water the garden of your empathic nature. You'll learn how to feel centered and peaceful as a sensitive person, how to use your gifts as a superpower that they are meant to be, and you'll be receiving attunement and healing and new life strategies to live in the power and purpose of your sensitive nature. It's especially tailored for those who want to turn their empathic and sensory overwhelm into intuitive strength. It is immersive, yet very gentle program, and it's suitable for all levels of development. And I especially recommend it for those whose human design body graph reveals that they have an undefined emotional solar plexus. So if you are just ready to turn that sensitive sponging into the thing that we really need right now, we need your sensitive genius shining on this planet to be in the high frequency, high functioning of your sensitive superpower. So join Empowered Empath. You have access to the lessons starting right away. Oh, by the way, It's very affordable and even comes with payment plans. Only $177 for all of this content and you can make a payment plan of three months or six months. I made it extremely affordable and accessible because I know what it's like to need the help. So if it's your first time of really healing your empathic nature or you need to do it another time, this is the program for you. I can't wait to see you there. And now back to the show. I want to share a a story one time when I was in my backyard meditating and uh, I I heard like, uh, you know, my, a spirit guide come through. I was meditating for manifestation and all of that, you know, of course, as we do. And uh, a spirit guide came in and said, how dare you ask for more when there are limes on the ground? And I have a, a beautiful key lime tree and it was this time of year and the limes had all rained and fallen on the ground. And so basically this guide was telling me, you have some earth luck right here and this is wasted resource. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, it's both energetic, but it's literal. I went and collected those limes and I put them out as my neighborhood does. You know, we have so much citrus in in Southern California, put them in a basket. And when I walked back outside, my neighbor, right next door neighbor, she said, can I have these? I drink lemon in my water all day. I'll use all of these. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> it yeah. was, yes. And so there's all different kinds of ways where we have that energy that might be arrested in some area or just not attuned correctly. And this is an attunement. Is, is yes. It, yes, it's an attunement. It is. Practice. It is an attunement. Um, and it's, first of all, becoming aware of it, right? Mm-hmm. So I say to people first, you know, go through your home with like, and just imagine I have the eyes of God, I have the mm-hmm. eyes of the universe, yeah. and I'm looking at my home. Is this telling the same story as I desire for my future, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, first, like to, uh, thinking like, oh, I'm single, but I, I want to have romance. But everywhere you have image of lonely women, then what are you telling yourself constantly? It's okay to be alone. Mm. But you're also telling the universe because you are the universe in alignment mm. with the greater being is saying, I'm okay with that. And that's what I desire because that's what I put out. So it's like, become aware of it. Like you became aware of your citrus on the ground. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yes. I have, we have Lori who has a question here live on the YouTube live stream. And she says, Marie, why do you advise not to keep your shoes by the door that we use when we enter the home? Oh, what a great yeah. question. I'm interested. <laughs> yeah. So we always say your home is like a palace and you're the queen and the king or the president, whatever you want to say um, in your home. And so what we have seen is that in all the palaces, and I've been in many palaces, there's never shoes on the ground when you come in. Because shoes on the ground shows emptiness because they're not walked in. Uh -huh. And so they are actually a symbol of poverty. Mm -hmm. So you can have them at the entrance if you put them in a closet, if you put them in a shoe box, but you know, you cannot just leave them behind. And I know some people saying like, well, you know, in the Chinese uh, culture, you know, people put their shoes on the ground. I said, yes, but the Chinese population is not always aware of the more advanced feng shui. And I would say in the palace of the emperor, they would never put the shoes on the ground. Oh, that's such a good point, right? And I, I'm, I'm visualizing you could have a beautiful little box, little little yeah. chest that's right Correct. there. It would be yeah. lovely, you know? It would be right lovely. Mm -hmm. You put them right in there so that um, it's just like it creates clutter because most of the mm -hmm. time when you come in, people have like, oh, shoes are never well organized. So the first thing, the entrance is what we call the mouth of chi. It's a mouth of wealth. So when you come in and you see shoes on the ground, I mean, it's not really wealthy, even if they're Gucci shoes. I mean, to yeah. be honest, right? It's just like, there's, there's not the right thing. First of all, they smell a little bit. Put them in a shoe box, put some lavender uh, bags in it or some other essential oil so it smells well. Um, but when you come in, you want to be feeling the wealth of the space. Yeah. I always say family pictures, the family that lives there, a beautiful orchid, a candle. You know, something when you come in, you feel like, I'm at home. I feel yeah. welcomed. And also that means I welcome the universe with mm. all the wealth coming in. Oh, that's great. And Lori said, yes, that's interesting. I wonder because we don't wear shoes in the home. Right. No, I, well, you know what? I'll tell you what else. Uh, I, I pretty much take off my pants as soon as I come in the door too. And I don't leave them at the door. <laughs> I just want to get comfortable. <laughs> and yeah. then Christine says, Marie, how do you deal with items that are left to you from a relative? Mm -hmm. I find them hard to part with, although they aren't my personal taste. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, very yeah. good question. So yeah, it's like, it's one of the, the things that when you're let go of things everything has a story right mm -hmm. so i bought this there i traveled there and i bought this item there this is from my family and so on so you need to first of all look at if there are items that you feel are just not very aligned with you anymore don't put them in a place like your bedroom yeah because that's very personal space there so you can put them more in a living room yeah, because that's kind of where family and friends are coming in. I would not put them in your office too, because your office should be focused on not what everything happens with family, but your, your business, your career. So I would look at that and then see if, you know, based on feng shui, we look at the five principles. If it's something ceramics, like then, or something with crystals, we put it in like the west, the northwest, southwest. Mm. If it's something made out of wood, we could put it in the east, the southeast, and the south. So depending on what it's made, the the colors on the um, the element, the form it has, what it represents, we can actually use it as I would call an acupuncture tool mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we can put it out there so i have things from my parents-in-law that are like have this beautiful blue vase um and i always put it in the north because a, a blue single item in the north really affects everybody's career mm -hmm. so i actually put that there even if it's not my favorite thing but it's a really good feng shui tool right so in that sense and then there are some things i'm thinking it's not just good feng shui i just store it for the moment yeah. till perhaps you know i want to give it away or i want to pass it on to the next generation mm -hmm. that's great that's wonderful thank you for the questions everyone christine and tiffany says what about a shoe rack um it's open air but it keeps shoes off the ground or is it that the shoes need to be be 
enclosed or yeah so basically we don't want to see them is the point you don't want to see yeah. them so mm -hmm. a shoe rack is still you see them mm -hmm. right so i i would say uh you can put a shoe rack but put it in a closet mm -hmm. or at least when you open the door that you don't see them put them on the other side of the door so the door is is like they're behind the door mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. when you walk in you don't want to see them so that's like how you can play right right again because uh, yeah, I, I know I've walked into places. I mean, I don't wear shoes in my house either, but I go take them off and put them in my closet right away. I don't yeah. make any requirements of my guests. You know, I do, that's just how, you know, I don't, yeah. it doesn't matter to me. Um, I welcome them too so they can be comfortable. So I think that when I've, when I've gone into places where there's just a ton of shoes right there in the doorway, it, it, it doesn't feel welcoming. You know what I mean? It if I'm not. honest. Yeah. No, it's not. And it's really interesting. It's something more that is in the U S like in, I'm from Europe. Nobody takes their shoes off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's too cold. <laughs> it's right. Exactly. <laughs> well, in Southern California, we weren't flip, we're barely wearing shoes. <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah. We're not really even shoes. <laughs> Um, and then Lori says again, does your book talk about the ley lines? The as that, that aspect is fascinating. Yes, ley lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, this book doesn't talk about it. I have a whole program that is ah. called Diamond Dowsing. That is an online course where I talk about how to correct uh, underground water, electricity. Wow. Um, and also I talk about ley lines. And, you know, um, of course, there are, when ley lines, um, there are like, I would say almost like energy lines, yeah, mm -hmm. that um, people can um, have in their home. Uh, but most of the time, for example, in Europe, the, you know, the ancient ones knew exactly where the ley lines were, and they would, especially where the ley lines would cross in a in a perfect crossing, they would put their cathedrals, they would put there the altar, they would put palaces there, they would build temples on it, yeah. they would, um, so they would actually. Uh, they already knew so well where they were that they put important public uh, places on it because when you're on the ley line, your energy goes up. It's easier to get into delta brain waves, by the way. When you pray, when you meditate, the energy is directly connected to the universe. Wow. And delta brain waves, they, when you are able to be in waking delta state, which yeah. one would be in prayer and meditation, because we're, we're in, we, are in delta when we sleep but if we have a waking delta state it can shift it can make impossible possible it can shift Correct. reality like, and that is powerful. actually what the ancients once know yeah. right so they would go there and so i say to people you actually also can create that we have um in diamond dowsing we have special energy rings and you can find that on the website quantum energy rings that by people sitting in it they actually go directly into awakened delta state so there's there's some things you can do with it but talking about brain waves is that for example in feng shui when people are looking at their good directions and you, again you can look at your the app and you have four directions that are colored that are connected with you and you have four empty ones now if you face if you look at one of your good directions you start within three seconds we have done the encephalogram test you start spiking more into alpha when you look at the, the directions that are empty for you you start spiking faster into beta directions wow. yeah so and it goes very fast and so even when people for example sit on the desk and they can see the door they can see people coming in. They are in a power position. They spike faster into alpha. If they are with their back to the door or they're like looking at a window, they're looking onto a wall, then they go faster into beta brainwaves. And that's why creativity and easiness and solutions are coming easier when you start practicing feng shui. That's incredible. And so I'm a hypnotherapist. One of the things that I, I do, and I, when I see clients in here in my office, I'm thinking I need to look up their, I need to look up their their number and yeah, put correct. them in that put them in that position. Have their head pointed. Correct. So if they were lying back or reclined yeah. back, then the head should be in the right direction. Exactly. When you're awake, you want to look at the right direction. Right. And right. and it's really a lot of healers and uh, coaches and psychologists are using that already mm. because they see the shift you know, that it's like easier. Mm -hmm. And also whatever um, healing you do, it, it integrates faster. 
And so this is in your course, Diamond Dowsing. Is it, did I, is that the name of it? So, I yeah. I so we have feng shui that is everything with directions and mm -hmm. like working on your environment. So that is the feng shui. So they can get the feng shui, your life courses and their certification programs for it. But then everything with ley lines and electricity curing and everything to do with dowsing literally for underground water to make sure that your home is magnetically clear. And because of that, you will also create more alpha brainwaves and get even higher theta and delta brainwaves. That is in diamond dowsing. Great. I've just, we have Marie's website. You can find all of this on the website, including how to buy the book and the app. Of course, we just find in the app store, but I put there just in the comments, diamond dowsing course. So everyone will remember how to find that. And we have another, uh, this is from Crystal Rose. Are there any feng shui items I can bring romance into my life, please? Mm, yeah, mm. of course. Well, the first thing, I would like you to focus on your bedroom mm -hmm. and to check out what is hanging above your headboard. Yeah, because that image there is affecting your romance. So make sure you avoid anything with water because water kind of, you know, literally, um, I would say drowns your romance. Put something loving about it. Could be hearts. Could be a picture of you and your relationship uh, partner. But if you don't have that, two hearts work very well. The word love. Make sure you also try to avoid having mirrors reflecting your bed. And even a television can be a reflective uh, piece of uh, uh, like mirror, mm -hmm. because when you have mirrors reflecting your bed, you're doubling your loneliness. So cover them. Put a screen in front of it as you're sleeping. And then, you know, activate your relationship direction. So go to get the app in the Feng Shui Your Life book. We explain all the steps. And when you look at your relationship direction, you cannot have any clutter, nothing broken. And then you activate it again with the right symbols in your bedroom. Oh, that's so great. And when I learned this from you, I have, as a lot, some people have, I have the full length closet door mirrors. And yeah. so I just put a little curtain in front of it and it looks nice too. <laughs> it looks nice. And how are you sleeping since you do that? Oh yeah, much better. And you, I already, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that mirrors are also portals. And so I would mm. slide it over so that when I turn on my side, I'm not looking at it, but it's still right. just there. You know what I mean? I could look down and I could, I could yeah. see it, but it wasn't like in my direct eye line. But I put a nice little curtain over it and um, added a little more color. So yeah, yeah. it works out really well. <laughs> well, Easy. you know, once you have uh, mirrors uh, surrounding you, you actually will go faster into beta brainwaves, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. And you also, we have seen through tests that inflammation goes up, uh, blood pressure goes up. And then when people stop that, they really, their health improves. This is so incredible. And I'm, I'm just about halfway through and I'm so excited to continue to go on this journey of feng shuiing my life. And I'm really super interested in the diamond dowsing course too, because you're getting into some of that nitty gritty that ooh, I just love so much. Marie, is there any, anything else that you would like to share with us, how people can be connected with you? And of course we, you know, they need to buy your book and get the app. Anything else you'd like to share before we conclude today? Well, thank you for, first of all, having me on the show. It's such a pleasure. And um, I would say go to mariediamond.com. You will have all the online courses, the events, also the podcast access, um, get the app because it's for free. Yeah. And um, also you can get the book, you know, Feng Shui Your Life. And there are other books on Amazon store that you can go deeper into all this information. So um, I'm looking very for, much forward to help you on the journey to manifest that missing link that you all have. And that is Feng Shui. Oh. Thank you. So wonderful. You're just such, you're such a gift to us all. So thank, thank you everyone. You. This is Marie Diamond, Feng Shui Your Life, get her book. And I appreciate you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Well, I had the best time talking to Marie and thank you guys for who are here and you are commenting and I see that there's a few more comments here. I just wanted to say hello. Hi, Tiffany. Thank you so much. Yes. Isn't she great? I, and while I'm going to share something with you since we have quite a few of us here. 
Um, something about uh, also manifestation. And Crystal Rose says, um, I didn't have anything above in the bedroom, but yes, I'll get something romantic. It is so, it really is such a powerful practice uh, to be able to calibrate your energy. And this is why vision boards work it, when they work for us is because they are actually attuning our energy. Again, every time we scan something, if I had a vision board and it had, if I, let's say I wanted to be an Oscar winning actor, and I put an Oscar up there. Maybe I put Bradley Cooper up there because I'm imagining he would be like my, my leading man in the film that I would get that Oscar. I put up a red carpet. I also put up some of the, the deeper meanings to what that is about, you know, being that Oscar winning actor. And every time I am anywhere proximate to it, there is a, an illumination, a radiation that's coming off of that vision board. And then my eyes scanning it, even if I'm not consciously picking it up. I mean, how could you not consciously pick up Bradley Cooper's beautiful crystal eyes, though? I mean, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> and But it does actually stimulate that, and it will send you out into the day that way. But as Marie said, we have a 3D uh, vision board in our space. And so I'm really excited to continue to work with it. And by the way, since I started, since I read Marie's book, um, I did, I'm reading it still. I did have some really powerful manifestations start to open up for me, which they're a little green. I'm not going to quite share them yet. And this is, this is V Tariff. Um, you, she says, Trisha, you're doing a great job having such great speakers. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Hi, Tracy. Nice to see you too. So I wanted to share with you something that is actually in Modern Mystic Life today. And first of all, let me tell you about Modern Mystic Life. If you enjoy this podcast, either on the YouTube channel or on the podcast feed, then I don't know if you know this, but I have something called Modern Mystic Life. Now, this is an extremely low cost, very low cost. It's $11 a month. It's And, and there's a, it's got a multifunction to it. It's like um, having a Patreon, you know what I mean? How people have that to support their podcasts. And so basically for, with this $11 subscription, we have two live events. And that already is like really incredible. We have a live meditation and that one is coming up this month. This is January. That one is on the 11th of this month. And then we also have a live workshop. And the workshop that we have this month, for example, I will be channeling Archangel Uriel and I'll be in the channeled state for usually an hour, 90 minutes straight. And I have a person there who is moderating and leading the session. And those who come live, if they would like to receive a direct channeled message by asking a question from me channeling Archangel Uriel. It's so powerful. And that's just what we're doing this month. I've also taught classes on magic. I've taught classes on um, invoking archangels. I mean, there are so many different classes, different workshops. What I do with these workshops with Modern Mystic is my intention is to be able to be pretty cutting edge, to be even experimental. And so this past the last four months, I did this channeling session each month with the four cardinal archangels, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and now we're doing Uriel. So even if you don't come live to the session, you get the replay. And even if you don't ask a question, it's really powerful, the messages for all of us. And so that's just one part of it. But then also I have a catalog of exclusive content that I actually deliver to you throughout the week. Now, the cool thing about it is that it's delivered by SMS text messenger. So you don't have to log in anywhere. You just get a text and it sends you the link that you can click right through and it'll start playing the video, start playing the audio, or I also have like a long, just sometimes the transcript of it. And I give this out throughout the week and sometimes I'll do a, a long two-hour class. I'll parse it out throughout the month. And it's like you're getting an exclusive behind, you know, deep cut, deep spiritual teaching. And we have uh, we have some people here, Tracy saying, Modern Mystic is an awesome group of souls. And he's one of them. Tracy is one of them. And the community when we come together is really a powerful way to activate um, and really create a manifestation for ourselves. I'm telling you, if you want to uptick your manifestation of anything and all things in your life, if you can get into community, 
spiritual community. It is like, it's an spiritual osmosis, meaning that as Tracy shares his powerful manifestation or even asks a question that is a that will provoke a deep healing that is going to spread throughout all of us through the resonance that we're creating and tiffany is there as well yes and uh, so um, for those of you listening on the replay i'm highlighting their comments on the live so i wanted to share with you something that is a part of i actually delivered it today so some exclusive content from the um, modern mystic class uh, that i'm giving today and it, pardon me a moment this is live produced so it's going to take me a second to actually share it and this is a video i'm going to share the video but you'll also just hear the obviously you'll hear it as an audio this is from a class that i taught actually about three years ago and I actually, in order to edit this, I had to watch it, which I, I don't usually watch my own stuff back at, you know, it's like, <laughs> I don't need to hear it. <laughs> I feel it, but I do need to hear it. But this class was called Invoking, is called Invoking Archangels. And they teach us in this piece that I'm going to play for you, right there live in the moment. So if you're watching, I encourage you to have a look at the video because there's this moment where I'm receiving a download and you can see me slipping into state. Marie and I talked about going into state a lot in this uh, in this interview. And you can see it happening as I receive an attunement. So I'll go ahead and play it for you now. So once again, we're back to the story. That what we tell about the the energy that we call Archangel Michael is a story that helps us to focus and to embody by the speaking of the words and the seeing of the images and the feeling of the feelings that have to do with this ritual or the story that we have about Archangel Michael. And all of it is real and nothing, and the, it, nothing can be limited to the story either. It's just, it, they're just signposts posts to the greater experience. And so the archangels, first creation of source energy, then the, there were other hosts of angels, basically other parts of each of these angels created. These, uh, then the angels, these beings of light, created oversouls, and oversouls are what dispatch multidimensional consciousnesses like humans and also animals, plants, and all of that. And the actual planet, our planet, Earth, the energy of, we call her Gaia, and she is like an archangelic energy who creates the earth and, and dispatches the elements in order to match the, the soul calling to create the planet. So I know a lot of you have heard me and heard Crystal also talk about this, um, but I'm just going over, you know, some of the basics. So you can consider that since archangels partnered with source energy and eventually created the oversouls, oversouls dispatch the consciousnesses, to create the physical form, that we, at the level of the oversoul, there's a sort of archangel energy that created your oversoul. Like Crystal was saying, it's kind of like a grandfather energy. And what I think is, I actually, when I do readings, I'll look at your archangelic um, connections but I never assert that this is your archangel, your, your grandfather archangel, because I don't think that's appropriate even. I think that's, in, um, I know it's not appropriate. It's, I believe that that is um, infringing upon free will. Something like as, as um, you know, archetypal as that is really something you have to discover on your own. Now, that's from the oversoul level. Then when we get to the creation of the consciousness, the multidimensional consciousness, this almost happens like at a, Right, but when the oversoul is is dispatching, but not quite yet, there is this pre-birth experience where you, who is going to be you, <laughs> your consciousness, calls together all of the soul family, all of those all of those potential soul contracts that you're going to make, and other, you know, beings to help to be on this council to create this vortex that is going to be your multidimensional consciousness or the soul vortex and when i had a um a regression it was actually a quantum um what is it called qhht quantum healing hypnosis technique session and i saw this uh, between so this is just the way that i saw it but you know again 
you may resonate to it exactly or see something slightly differently. And so it was like the way I saw it, I was, my perspective, I was at this, over this vortex of energy. And this was, and it looked kind of like light, you know, or something like that, if I could describe it. And all, there was this council, like I remember specifically, the only human I really remember being there was my mother. Um, but I'm sure my husband was there and all other, you know, kinds of other people, but that one really stood out. And then, you know, there were other archangels that were there. And there were, you know, cosmic beings, and there were all kinds of different beings who were there. And I would confer with them. It was almost like, what do you think should go in here? Almost like we're making a cake together. And then I'm talking to Gabriel, and Gabriel's like, maybe some nutmeg. And I'm like, you know what, you're right. Let's put some nutmeg in this soul. And then I drop it in. So this is us making that energy, that resonance. And together, Gabriel and I made a third energy that we put into my multidimensional consciousness. So Gabriel is a part of me, you know, in a literal sense, creating my form. Now, I understand my particular oversoul to be parented or grandparented or whatever you want to say by Ariel. So Ar it's almost like Ariel, this was all ex happening within the energy of Archangel Ariel, but we had all of this conferring going on. When we kind of got to a place where the vortex was in some kind of readiness, it's not stationary ever, it's always creating and co-creating and creating and co-creating, then it was sort of compared to a time-space potential reality that it would best be able to have all of its divine expansion and then it was it was dispatched and that dispatch actually magnetized it was answered by Gaia who sent a dispatch of the elements to begin to create the physical form and so that began you know and that creation begins in my mother's body but it isn't until it's about 88 days before you're born that you're you actually d attach to. It's almost like, you know, it's just an incubation going on inside the, the mother. And then about 88 days before you're born, the soul energy or the multidimensional consciousness formally attaches to the... Um... Now, I'll say this too, if, when, when babies are stillborn, I think sometimes that there wasn't an attachment that was made. It was just some biology playing out. But I, I'm not going to, again, uh, insist that that's always the case. It could be that that's, that was the life of the soul to have 88 days in the womb and then to not, you know, that could be a, a path that was there. So anyway, um, wow, we went off on a thing. I hope, I, I, I hope you guys are enjoying this because I didn't know we were going to go here. So we're getting the idea of how invoking archangels is a powerful experience because we are activating all of this expansive knowledge intention, authority. You, if the archangels have this capacity to be these higher authors or authorship, meaning they're responsible at a certain level for the story, then you are bringing yourself to a frequency that is in alignment with that. And you're doing it by acknowledging and honoring your free will. Your free will is the tool that executes your source energy, your piece of source energy. And so you're aligning all of that. And so resonating, and it's really simple, even though we're talking about all these things and it's like, oh my gosh, there's this, 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 you know what I mean? It's actually completely simple. They are there for us in this capacity of, as that story that we can feel and then we can resonate to and we can just know and, be, and just come into alignment within a free will sense. And, and they, they feel it's important to say that when, when we say that having your free will in alignment with something and calling it in, it's, you don't have to be perfect in it because we are, our human minds say, well, basically if I, you know, in order to, let's say, get a healing or something like that to, to heal of something, I have to have absolutely no, re Ooh. What's that all about? Sorry, I'm getting a tone in my ear. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. So um, it's in my left ear too. That's weird. So the, the I hear you. So what the the a free will energy can potentially sometimes only be fifty one percent. Thank you. I got it. Fifty one percent in favor of that healing coming, in, uh, um, you know, into being. It doesn't mean that you have to like 
eliminate all of the possibility in your awareness that it could not happen. That's how we get a little mixed up. Oh, I got it. Thank you. So they're telling me that that is actually a mechanism that is used to confuse us. And it's something for us to over, overcome and become empowered by. So they say on average, they're telling me right now, on average, that it's about 70%. And to, to not be fixed on the numbers, but out of curiosity, because I feel like Carson was probably going to ask me that. So is it always 51% or is it more? Uh, it's around 70% when the free will is in alignment with the manifestation of it. Okay, cool. And so they say then when you invoke archangels, for example, or do some kind of ritual like this, that it helps to tune your frequency so profoundly that it can kind of just, it's, for lack of a better way to say it, it's almost like a cheat. You don't, you, you can just borrow the resonant energy of the archangels. That's really cool. Thank you. It's not really a cheat like you're doing something wrong, like in our language, but it's almost like it's a shortcut um, to, and you don't have to, by the way, they say um, studying or learning is, we do that when it's fun and we do that when it feels good. You don't have to know everything possibly about the stories of archangels or the lore or anything like that in order to work with them. Uh, you don't even have to know their names. You don't have to know any of this. It, it's, it's natural for us. Uh, but these stories and names and, and details ha we like. And they do help us to kind of pop into the frequency. That's an example. We're getting pieces of that throughout the week. The reason it's called Modern Mystic is we're busy. And we're going to the different things that we're going to, our jobs and taking care of family. And that is, you know, we do our meditation and maybe we're doing our feng shui as Marie taught us, but we need a little boost. And so this platform, it's just, again, $11 a month where this community and with this exclusive content with the twice monthly live meetings it's such a screaming deal because I want to continue to curate an ease of community and an ease of being able to expand in our consciousness and in our spiritual experience. So it's meant to be easy, to fit right into your life so that you can continue to live a modern life, but also if you want to live a life that is that of the mystic. So that's what I want to invite you to. Uh, you have the link on my in the show notes, but here it is again. It's just my website, and you'll find it under Work With Me and Courses, and it's um, amazing. So check it out. We have all of this really great content coming out this month. And I see I have another question here from Lori who says, do I do animal communication? I absolutely do. Now, my one-on-one -on -one sessions are at a premium. You know, I, oh, there's, I do have availability pretty much every month. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm kind of, a, I have a waiting list a lot of time for that. So for those one-off sessions of either animal communication or the empathic channeling session, which is like a reading times a million, is actually channel your, your higher self, your soul, as well as archangels or any other guides that you have that are there to support you and help you to attune and really it's like a, it's a deep soul reading people tend to get them once a year i have people who actually get them every year on their birthday those empathic channeling sessions so yeah thanks for asking and tommy says that my oh thank you that my engagement ring are it, it's, it's beautiful thank you it is it's actually uh i like to talk about it because there's a great energetic background to it they, you can't see it very well, it's maybe, but it is an old stone. It's actually called an old mine cut. And it I love the I love the energy of, of it. It's pre-conflict, meaning it's before any of the blood diamond conflict was occurring. And it is cut in a way that is this old-fashioned way, meaning they don't really people don't, it's not popular anymore. Where it, it's it's not cut to look like it's as big as it is. It's cut to bring in light and color and to to actually illumine in a certain way. So I guess the modern way that people, I've never been really that into like diamonds. <laughs> My husband resourced this all on his own. The modern way is that people like diamonds that are really, really clear. And this one isn't. It actually has color to it. 
And they also cut them so that they're as flat as possible so it will appear larger. And this one isn't. It's 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 cut, you know, more of a diamond shape, actually, interestingly. So thanks for thanks for the compliment. And I just wanted to, you know, talk about the energy of it because I do love it so much. And uh, let's see, Tommy says, did you see my other comment? Uh, Tom, oh, I let you said, um, happy new year to me and my husband. Hope we have a blessed year. Love you both. I'm so grateful for your live streams. Uh, you said, actually, uh, Tommy wrote love streams. And I, I, I'm going to take that as uh, a, a good Freudian slip, <laughs> live streams and being a part of your community. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. I'm so happy that you're here as well. Well, um, so again, I just want to invite you to check out Modern Mystic, join the community. It's really incredible. I also want to tell you that if you go to my website, if you're interested in opening your psychic abilities, I have an ongoing community for that as well. It's actually for your intuition and manifestation development, and that's called Sacred Sphere. And we're meeting twice a month. In a way, it's like you know, a development circle, but it's so much more because it's not just about um, developing your psychic abilities, although there are people there doing that. And there are, we get together in our breakout rooms and practice things like giving readings. And so there are experts that I have trained who are there also uh, learning and practicing animal communication. But people who are not readers, who don't want to do that, but they want to be in spiritual community, maybe they want to receive a free reading from one of these incredible experts who are there in the community. And they and also to I teach and I lead a meditation every time. So this is a really incredible place. We meet twice monthly on Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific. And this is a great companion to my other courses that are available on demand. My big powerhouse, two signature courses, multidimensional mediumship and animal communication. And both of those are immersive programs that you can take right now, self-paced, and then you add sacred sphere to it so that you can actually activate it and start to see your gifts unfold. I wanted to make things as easy as possible, but I also wanted to continue to create community. So you can do a drop-in for sacred sphere. Our next meeting is the 14th, I believe. It's the second uh, in January. You can find all of the live dates there. You can either do a drop-in or I highly recommend that you subscribe because with the subscription, you get all kinds of lessons and the replays and meditations. And there's some really incredible stuff and it's uh, a really beautiful place to be. So those are the things I wanted to share with you. And again, just another shout out to my guest today, Marie Diamond. I've had the pleasure of meeting Marie in person and working with her on this uh, tour that she's doing to tour this book. I actually am helping and supporting that. I love to work with podcast tours. And so that's something that I have going a little on the side as well. And I'm this earth magic that she talked to us about, being able to shift your environment, even if you change one little thing, 1%, it can open the floodgates of that energy moving in the way that is empowered for you to create romance, wealth, health, all of these things it might be just a little bit of an adjustment that you can make in your environment or to that 3D manifestation, or excuse me, 3D vision board for your manifestation. So that's what I have for you in this episode. I really look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment if you're on YouTube. Be sure to leave a review on the podcast if you're listening that way. And be sure to keep shining your light on our beautiful world because we need you. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. <laughs>